John, you you were in a long term relationship with a beautiful partner, and she passed a few years ago, and you took a couple years off and started over. And so many of the women here that are listening are starting over and don't necessarily know how a man views starting over and and what are some of the, the pitfalls they sometimes struggle with and how they can start over and find the love of their life. So I was wondering if you might want to share a little bit about your process when it comes to mourning and opening again to love. Well, that's a huge subject. Uh, and we have time, limited time. So I'll try to be to the point of what I feel is useful or helpful. Thank you. Uh, statistically, just to understand what I tend to see and, and have read about is women on average in starting over wait nine years. Oof. And men on average wait three years is there, uh, to get married, for men to get married. And for women, it's nine years if they get married, but a lot don't. Mm. Uh, and it's a very challenging uh, experience for women and less challenging for men in most cases. Why and is that? Like, what's the difference between men and women? Men are primarily driven by sex. Mm. Uh, and you can only have sex with a partner, a woman, whereas women are driven primarily by love. Yeah. And you can love a man. You can also love your pet. You can love your children. You can love your garden. You can love God. You can love so many ways to, to, to experience love. But uh, not any other way to experience the sex <laughs> so yeah but sex uh, although many women and you have to remember there's always exceptions to everything i say is not the prime directive throughout their life and for men it is yeah. it's a part of the brain which is has control sex is twice as big in men and it's not directly linked to love but it is the doorway for men to feel love Mm. Uh, you think about men as these protectors, they go out into danger. We're talking about thousands of years. We are not as uh, emo connected to our emotions as much as women, although modern men are different, but still these prime directives are a time where men were not in touch with their softness, their tenderness. Uh, to be a warrior, for example, to kill the enemy, even to kill animals and whatever, you, 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 you couldn't be so soft and tender. Uh, and you couldn't let fear control you. You had to go out and do it. You couldn't complain. You just had to endure. So it's a different reality. Whereas women to nurture a child, you have to anticipate what is that child feeling and what are they experiencing? And that awakens an ability to feel. So you can feel love for a child. You can feel love for a man. You can feel love for your life, feel love for yourself. Whereas men typically don't feel as much as women, even though there's exceptions to this. And this is when men are way out of balance, actually. Uh, if you look at biologically, you know, there's so much confusion around gender that I have to always preface our whole conversation by knowing, and I'll do it shortly, although I elaborate this in great detail in, in the book over here to my right, which is Mar Beyond Mars and Venus, my mm -hmm. book on relationship. And in there, I point out the simple knowledge that for men to feel well-being, they have this hormone testosterone has to increase and it has to be at least 10 times more than a woman's. Wow. And, for and to commit to her, then it has to double. So now if you look at statistically, as men get older, their testosterone levels are going down. So there's less of an imperative to commit unless in the presence of a woman, his testosterone goes up. That's how he bonds with her. Now, for a woman, the way she bonds primarily is when her estrogen goes up in his presence. And estrogen goes up when you feel, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I delight in your presence. I'm go glad to spend this time with you. Uh, without you, I would feel very lonely. I need a man in my life. Now, I know for a lot of women, <laughs> they kind of go, well, no, I'd like to have a man in my life, but actually, I need a man in my life. So you have to kind of yep. define what you need a man for. So true. Uh, and, and you see, when you go to a doctor, you need to get his advice and his support. That produces the hormone estrogen. When you go to a counselor, talk about your feelings and explore things out loud. 
that produces estrogen. So women come to me and I get them to talk about their feelings. And even if I don't give them any solutions, they feel better. Right. And the tears start flowing and they feel connected and heard. <laughs> yes. Connected is the word there. Because when you feel heard and seen and understood, what's happening biologically is your estrogen is going up. And when estrogen goes to about 10 times higher than a man's healthy level, 10 times higher, your stress levels go down and you feel good. You feel yeah. good. You love yourself. You love others and so forth. It's like you have to constantly keep that estrogen up. And now if you're over 50, there's already another challenge, which is there's a tendency of estrogen to be much lower after you go through yeah, menopause. Absolutely. But the good news is that your adrenal gland can produce enough estrogen for you to be happy and fulfilled and have a great sex life. It's just you, you needed higher levels of estrogen when you were younger because you're still, your body was still trying to make a baby, okay, or could make a baby. So, but once you're beyond that, you don't need as high level, but you need the right balance of hormones. See, right. that's the key. It's a balance. Your adrenal mm -hmm. gland can make the hormones you need to be in a romantic relationship. So, but basically to fall in love with a man, because it's, you know, I talk to a lot of women in their fifties and sixties and so forth. And they go, yeah, I'm dating men, but they don't give me that excitement. You know, I want that excitement. I'm but he's a nice him. guy. I just am not feeling it. And I don't understand why. <laughs> that's a, that's the major thing. So that that's because your estrogen levels in the presence of that man are not doubling. Because that's yeah. where women bond with a man romantically at any age is when your healthy estrogen level, which at, when you're older, is going to be lower, but still at your healthy level, it needs to double. It needs to be something special about him as opposed to he's just a nice guy. So, but I don't have that. It doesn't ignite me. It doesn't excite yeah. me. It doesn't make me feel happy. So that is purely biological. Okay. Purely biological. So a solution to this uh, challenge is to minimize the expression of testosterone in your body, because testosterone tends to go with lowering estrogen and estro high estrogen for men tends to lower their testosterone. So you're dealing with a lot of men who are all over 50. Statistically in our country, America, and our modern days, a man's testosterone at 50 is half what it was when he was a young man. Now I'm 70, mine's 50% higher. Because- <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. It really is a fantastic life I live. Uh, I'm more on my male energy than I've ever been in my life mm. to enjoy the romance. Because again, for men, when their testosterone goes high, they tend to become selfless. They tend to be empathetic. They tend to be caring. They're supportive. That's if his testosterone is going up and he's in a loving relationship. 